the leaf, the lau, the ha, the eo, the oha, eh? the lihi, the kohina, the apex, the pico. These are all parts of the kalo. This is how you learn the varieties. The span is 36 inches. 42, 42 inches on the span, 46 inches, and the height is 4 feet. 41 inches tall, about four feet. Number of stolen. Okay, this is what we're talking about. You see this guy? This is the, some people call jumping jack or runners, rhizome. I got nine oha. That would be about 30 inches. Got it. The shape of the leaf. Is it round? Ovate, they call it, eh? Round. Sagittate, a little bit more. When you look something like this, you go, oh, look like lao loa. Yeah, long leaf. So without even looking behind at the plant, you, you look this is oh, long the leaf. Hawaiians are very, when they called something, when they named something, there was a, a big reason behind that. You know, today you look at Jerry, he's got part Portuguese, so he talk a lot. But the Hawaiians were very careful in what they said. You know, sagittate, narrow sagittate, Ovate, broadly ovate. You see how this thing is cut? It's shallow. It's called a shallow uh, sinus. Then you have the extra deep one of the pico. This is the extreme. It goes all the way down. When you look, you look that tail around there, already I know it's in the family of api or perhaps uh, pi because they, they are ladies. This is how they stand. Yeah? Dalehua, ku, up. Apuai, catching the water. You know, they're, they're facing down or horizontal. Some of them are described, they're really bent like that, yeah? And, and that's part of its description, its character. Others, like the Apuai, will be up like this, up in the water, yeah? Or then you have uh, Paakai, uh, you have Piali. They're all like this form. So again, it's, it's the characteristics. You look along the leaves, they call it undulations. I don't know what the Hawaiian word was that, but you got the wrinkles, yeah, right on the edge. Where they get plenty, like the Araimo family. Or the one we just look out here, the Kai. Plenty undulations around. Then you go to the Lauloa, pure, yeah. Color of the leaf. Some of you are going to laugh, but they're all green. Not all, some get little changes, you know. These, this is a mini color chart. Royal Horticulture uh, Society Standards. This is the mini chart we're gonna use, and we've already practiced with it. It is so amazing. This little small chart, I'm able to get the color of the leaf on the top, as well as the bottom, different colors. All get numbers, and it's incredible. 
Uh, this is the big, the big package. And I really believe that in, in the future, when we get all this data down, it's possible we're going to need this to break it further down. Because uh, my mini chart can give real just this, but the shade is missing in between. And I'd sure like to know the difference, especially the EO. When you cut them, you say pink. Pink what, you know? Purple, the fiber is purple. The, what kind of purple, you know? Yellow, is it yellow or brown? Mm, you know, you, there's always that, you're not too sure. So hopefully this will give us that picture. I like to incorporate both traditional as well as uh, modern technology to help our mofuna ma'adis thing here. Yeah. Is it variegated? Of course, Ilepayo, Wahia Pele, uh, the Ula Ula Pony, she'll get those variegation inside the Lao. Type of variegation, that's important. Is it flake, molted, stripe, leaf, blade, margin color? I'm looking at this guy here. On the edge and uh, you're gonna have good fun too now when you're going to try to color that out but there's there's a color some is real predominant they'll have real dark purple some will be kind of reddish tinge some of them very indistinct hard to tell now this is the kind of stuff leaf laminate appendages now i'm thinking it when i see that i'm thinking of um pico lehua ape the ruffles underneath 20 inches by the width. Measure them too. You guys are gonna measure the leaf dimensions and then measure how, how, how big that one is. Now, pico. On the lao, we all know that, the center. We're gonna get the color. And some of them gonna be wide like the Tahitian and the Manapiko. Sap color. <laughs> Gosh, some is purple, brown, red. It's really hard, but we're gonna try our best. Um, leaf main vein color, upper and beyond junction. So away from the junction all these veins coming out they want to know what the color is called the pattern of the vein a v i or y what we're looking for is uh, the vein pattern and this is the vein here this is this is the primary the y shape and then these are the secondary veins this is the v section this is the I, and then totally the Y. Some of it only up here, like the Ula Ula Pony. The purple or the coloration, the pigmentation only comes on the V. Others only on the I, this, this long stretch. These guys doesn't have any color. In this particular variety, all of it, in the primary Y, the Y is a distinction, as well as the secondary. You'll notice the V or the sinus itself, this vein here, is wide, yeah? Now when you get down to the, well, look at this one here, the Mana Pico. You see how the Y is real close? That also is a good indicator to what color it is. So the variation on that. Vein pattern color, lower. Patio, the ha. You see this here, I get, get coloration, yeah? Very important, the ha. Light color green, go up, kinda uli uli, kinda black. Already my mind's thinking, oh, Lauloa Palakia family. That's the characteristic. 
but not only the laulo of palakia. They have other varieties too, get that. Some of them solid green. Yeah. They're breaking this down, top third, yeah. And then middle, and then the bottom, yeah. Patio stripe. We have in here, I think, uh, the manini ones, yeah? No, nah, this one is manini kea. All manini varieties are striped, like yeah. the manini fish, but not all striped kalo is a manini. Uh, the ula ula moano, that's the green stripe on the red ha, or even the ula ula kumu, the pinkish white stripe on the red ha. So those would have present, yeah? And then, of course, we're going to try to highlight the, uh, the colors. Patio basil ring color. That's what we call the kohina. Yeah. And this is the guy right here. The kohina color. Yeah. Some of our variety of taro over here is pink way up. And it makes a difference if it's you don't have any shading up here or whether you know it's like two inches some is they say like three to four inches above it's all light pink that they don't have this inside the book so we need to incorporate that okay cross section that's an easy one is it open or is it closed? Jeez, I don't know. This to me look like uh, number two, closed. It's not sticking out, flaring out like. The flaring out number one would be more like the uh, Santa Soma. They really come and open. I don't think I've seen our Colocasia that is uh, that far open. Okay. Four feet. 28 inches. Okay, ratio, ratio of the length. This is the apex here. Yeah? So from here, all the way down to the Kohina. So you need to take a measurement from this apex all the way down to the bottom there yeah, to get that length, patio length. This is the sheet, yeah? This is where all the low, the leaf come out from. So this is the sheet. And it comes right up here and it ends right here. And then this from the Kohina to the apex is your ha or your patio. So from the Kohina, about 28 inches is the sheet, yeah? Patio sheet. Now the whole patio runs up 40 inches. And then they say the sheet color. Now, I, I want to say the sheet color to me is the inside. Some of them have a, a pattern, some of them have a different color. Because it can't be the color on the outside, because that would come with the patio, lower third, the uh, edge color. Leaf, sheet, edge color. When they talk about the edge color, that's the leaf. So that's that's one of the most uh, one of the more very very important uh, characteristic. So that edge is actually the lihi. Yeah. Our taro is not as uh, waxy like say the uh, the api or the alocasia that would consider waxy. Yeah? This is the flower. The makua when you canoe, the first thing you're gonna do is throw flower. So most of the energy going into that, the flower making, the seed. So the eo is not gonna be as good. So from the kohina, I got about five inches. I'd say four and a half. That's a good size. How about five and a half? Corn branching. These are the runners, yeah, the jumping jack. Uh, Hawaiian varieties uh, will have some, uh, especially the Manini family, Manini Territory, Manini Kea. 
and of course our regular taro and then this is more like our uh, Araimo family and of course our mana varieties the branching mana what does mana mean it's a mana mana lima the characteristic of all mana taro is multiple huli on one color mana mana lima the multiple huli on top and you know sometimes some people go and give you a uh, taro you know give you the taro with the huli and they will tell you oh this is mana keokeo mana ulu no argue with him because you don't see the mana on top because not all the time for mana majority of the time it does but our, our poe hawaii real akamai uh, our friend uh, achan lee he used to bring my house mana ulu and it was never mana it was single and I was just amazed, and I was thinking, God, is he raising a variety of mana ulu that I don't have? You know, I need to know this stuff. So one day we're eating, uh, we're sharing a meal, and I asked him, uh, Achan, uh, how come your mana ulu no mana? And he laughed. And here's a, te here's a technique he used. You see those eyes? He cut the eyes off. You know, same in the book. But he can make mana taro grow without the mana branching by doing that. By taking off all the eyes, the little bitty eyes. So all the energy into that one fully come out. Now you say, why would he do that? Well, if you like your color big, no, no, if you're going to make kulolo or something, you know, like the small ones, you got to, you know, work hard at it. You get the big taro, techniques of growing. So that's how I learned. Corm shape. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, this might be the original trait of the taro, but it also depends on your environment and your culture. Because I've seen some taro come out like daikon. Yeah. Or the one uh, that, you know, he's very enthusiastic, but there's long span in between. You know what kind of taro you can tell, eh? The Coke bottle. He came this month, last month, he no could come. So, oh, you know, the thing grow big fat, and he comes skinny, die not only, and he come big fat again, eh? Yeah, the Coke bottle effect. Like, oh, poor thing, brother never had time. He was too busy. And here, if we can get the weight, and if we get skill, that's in, uh, don't have to be in grams. Three pounds. Okay, okay. I got some purple. You got that. So I can scrape it off. Eh? So this is all pink. But, oh, this is nice. Okay, so, ooh, cortex. Now, what is cortex? I believe the cortex is the, the ilikana. This is what I'm calling the cortex. This, this under here. Very important. This is what makes the color of your poi, the ilikana. Leaf scar is brown. You see right there? This is a leaf scar right here. Right here is one. Here's another one. The hair, this is darker, see? The leaf scar is dark purple, whereas in between the leaves, it's usually not as dark. Flesh color, that's the guy. When you take the color of this here, you're going to have this variation, whether it be purple, pink, or whatever. So don't just cut the top when you take the huli off and you go, ah, purple, lilac, and use that color. You need to get inside to the eo. And, and when they talk about the central, that's important. Some of them even describe the upper portion as like in this case, you'd say pink, yeah? And then down here, more whitish. Or if you get into the mana ulo, the orange, yellow, beige, yeah? So yeah, that, that's very important.
skin. Uh, very seldom you can find different. This number one usually looks like the Boon Long. She'll be more on, on, on number one. Number three is the average one. And once in a while you'll hit number two. But take a look at it. And then if it, you know, the color comes out, that variety has whichever one, label it. We'll see if the low it changes it or different area, uh, timing or whatever changes. Uh, corn skin thickness, some lahi lahi, some are thin, some are thicker than others. See that there? Those are the buds. Root, oh, very important, root color. Root color can also be a deciding factor in, in uh, determining what variety it is, yeah? Some white, some green, some yellow, some orange, uh, red, pink, lilac, deep purple. They'll, they'll have different color. Root color, uniformity. I haven't seen, usually if it's pink, it's pink all the way. So I don't know if they're talking about start it off red and get pink and then almost white at the beginning. That's almost natural for all the root system, yeah? But do, do what you can. And that's it. That's the characteristics for it.